Preston Physics, Grade 11, Electricity and Magnetism, Note 10, Solenoids. When we're looking at solenoids or electromagnets, what we're doing is we're wrapping a wire around an object and then putting a current through it, knowing that if we have a magnet with a north and south and we have some sort of current, we then can tell which way the current's going, kind of like what we had in the last right-hand rule. But here, what we're going to do is we're going to take a solenoid and we're going to slice it in half. Then based on the direction of the current, we can tell whether we're going to have a north or a south pole at the bottom, top, right or left of that solenoid. So first we draw a wire or some sort of bar with a wire wrapped around it. That's what a solenoid actually is. And we say the direction that the current's going. We're now going to slice that part in half. So we've got half of that little bar, and then we've got all of the little wires that we've cut in half as well. So the wires, we just have half of them. And we know the current's going out one end and into the other of both of those wires. Now based on this, we can actually decide which way the current is going around those wires, which helps us to say which way the field lines are going to be going in this actual bar. So with the current all going down in the middle, the field lines go down. So we've got our field lines going down through the middle of this solenoid. What that makes is south at the top and north at the bottom. Now for any solenoid, we can find out which end will be north by using our right-hand rule number two, which is our right-hand rule for solenoid. The first thing we're going to do is pretend to grab the solenoid. Just like we did with the last right-hand rule, we're going to pretend to grab the object. In this case, we're going to point our fingers in the direction of the current. So if we know the current's going in one side, that's the way we point our fingers in and they come out the other side of the solenoid. Now, your thumb is now going to point in the direction of the north pole. So fingers point in the direction of the current on the front of the solenoid. Your thumb points in the direction of the north pole. So the diagram below is going to kind of show you what I mean. We draw our solenoid and we've got our current going through our wire. Let's say the current's going around kind of bottom to top. So we have to grab around going bottom to top. So our hand is a great hand that we're drawing here, but you kind of get the idea. And our thumb is pointing to the left in this case because we're grabbing around the top of the wire. So we know that, that our thumb is pointing to the north side, so we can then make our north and south pole. Now there's three factors that really affect the strength of a solenoid. So we're going to look at all three of those. The first being the number of windings in that solenoid. The more windings there are, the stronger the magnet. This means that there's more current going around that object and it's going to make a stronger magnet. More windings, stronger magnet. The second is the amount of current. The more current we put through, the stronger the magnet. That kind of makes sense. If we have more windings, we have more current. Or if we just put more current through that wire, we're going to have a stronger magnet. And the third is we need to use a ferromagnetic core. And all that means is that it's an object that can actually possess a magnetic field or it can make a magnet. Now there's two applications we're going to look at. The first is we're looking at something that has an electromagnetic relay. This would be like in a scrapyard. Now here we have a small circuit with a solenoid in it. Now that solenoid we can turn into a magnet. Now in the second circuit, it's actually a very large circuit and it's going to have the motor that we want to use. And We don't want to go through this motor so what we do is we create a magnet that's going to close a second switch and it's going to make that circuit work. It's easier than getting close to this big circuit or close to these big motors that we use. The second is just an electric bell. The way this works is kind of like a fire bell. So we have a circuit that's got a solenoid in it and what it actually has is kind of like a spring attached to a ringer and then there's the bell. 
So what's going to happen is we're going to put current through that solenoid. That solenoid is going to then make a magnetic field and the ringer is going to become magnetically charged. It's going to push itself away from a little block that's on the end. The bell is then going to get rung by the ringer, but that spring that's attached to the ringer is going to keep pulling it back. So it's going to close the circuit, put a circuit through the solenoid, make the ringer move away, hit the bell, then the circuit's going to be open, there's going to be nothing to push the ringer away, so then the spring's going to pull it back, and this is just going to keep happening to ring that bell. The questions associated with this note are 19 to 22 in your yellow duotang.